Today I'm visiting Oak Street Bootmakers and I'm really excited to meet with the owner George and have him show me some of the boots that they have. What's up George? Hey, how's it going Phil? Thanks for having me today. I noticed that you have uh, some pretty spiffy shoes that kind of match mine. I think these are some of the first... Um... Their first run, Oak Street's 2010. Yes. So yeah, insane that you still wear them. I remember coming to Fort Wayne, the tannery, and seeing you wearing them. I mean, I have to tell you, these are absolutely my most comfortable sh pieces of footwear, just in general. These are my go-tos. Yeah, mine are, people are always surprised that I'm wearing old shoes, but it's, it's like yours. Chrome XL gets so comfortable, you wanna keep wearing it. So mine are, I don't know, four or five years old. Yeah, people are like, you own Oak Street Bootmakers. Like, why aren't you wearing a new pair every year? And it's just because they get so comfortable. Well, my question is, Oak Street Bootmaker, we're doing yeah. Let's Buy Boots. That's right. <laughs> Help me buy some boots today. So I have a 10 and a half running shoe. How would you go about sizing me for a pair of trench boots or any of your other styles? I know that you have wide feet, uh, and that's an important part of the equation. For most people, their running shoes run a full size bigger than their real size, yeah. uh, which is your Brannock size. For most people, I would say you'll want to size down full size from your running shoe, but I know that you've got a wide foot, so 10 and a half running shoe, I think you'd be a size 10 in most of our boots. The correct last for you, because you have a wide foot, is it's called the Elston last. Right. So the Elston last uh, is what we build the trench boot on, trench, trench Oxford, trench chukka, uh, field boot, campus chukka, but our number one shoe, the trench boot, is built on the Elston last. That's gonna be a really great last for you because I designed it to be wide. Normally, when you wear a pair of boots, end of the day comes around and you can't wait to get them off your feet. The Elston last is designed to be a little bit wide, so at the end of the day, your foot has kind of swollen to fill up all of the volume. It's a really, really comfortable last. I think for you, when you put your foot in, you're not gonna feel any extra space because you have a wider foot. It's just gonna feel really good. And then Chrome Excel, over time, it's gonna stretch to conform to the width even more. So it's gonna be, I mean, it's gonna be a perfect, a perfect last for you. I mean, talking about conforming to width, just take a look at my gross duck foot here where I'm <laughs> pooching out the side so much. And um, even if you had, uh, you know, a normal width foot, they find the trench boot still to be most comfortable last for them. Now, if you wanted something dressier, uh, we also make the Lakeshore last. We do our dressier models on the Lakeshore last, but you know we know Chrome Excel, so even though it's a narrower last, Chrome Excel stretches in width. Let's get a pair of boots. Yeah. Uh, Let's buy boots. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're getting a pair, what, what do you like? You know, we know Elston is, is the right last, what style are well, you I feeling? Like, so I like the, the vibes of the trench boot and the storm boot. The big thing I'm interested in is I want to wear these for the, the stitch down patina Thunderdome. Okay. And I want yeah. something that's going to age the most patina, just like the best aging yeah. thing they have. Natural Chrome Excel all day long. We get people who get their natural Chrome Excel boots and they, they call us and they're like, these boots are beautiful. How do I keep them looking this way? We tell them like, you need to return those boots and get a different color. Mm. Cause natural Chrome Excel is not gonna stay looking like natural Chrome Excel. It's gonna turn from this natural color uh, to a brown. The toe is gonna get more wear and the back of the heel is gonna get more wear. They're gonna darken substantially. Next question is about sole. We can do leather sole or we can do day and night. Day and night is our best selling sole. Leather is my favorite sole. And you probably have experience with both. So well, what I do you like? Do, I think I jumped on the day night train because of the hype. And I oh, like yeah. it. I honestly, yeah. I like it. But I think the profile of just a chunk of leather for a sole is much more appealing to me. And I've been hearing from some people in the boot scene talk about how leather soles are a little bit more breathable. So it should sort of keep your foot a little drier and perhaps a little cooler. I also understand people's concern might be, I'm gonna fall on my butt <laughs> wearing these smooth leather soles or you know, maybe they're gonna wear out too quickly. But Two things about slippery, because we get that comment all the time. 
if it's wet outside, your sole is gonna be slippery. I don't care if it's day and night or leather. Slippery is slippery. The reason why I like leather, you mentioned the breathability, but most importantly for me, again, it's not our best selling sole, but the reason why I like leather is because it bends and flexes and it kind of like starts to take the shape of your foot. So you're not gonna be able to see those contours, but it can bend and flex so much. The other thing is you will have to resole uh, a leather sole quicker than day and night. We've been making leather sole, you know, boots for 10 years now. And I personally have my original trench boots that I have worn obviously hundreds of times. They've, they've gotten a lot of wear, original leather sole. Leather lasts a lot longer than people think. Day and night lasts even longer than that. So if you're not scared of a resole, then leather is the way to go. And like we recraft, your local cobbler can recraft it. Now we talked about patina and I'm looking at some very old, uh, like I've got some very old trench boots out of the well, corner of my eye. Uh, this is like, uh, you know, a forgotten uh, shelf up here. Like these are the very original first shoes I ever made, uh, which is kind of cool, of course. Chrome Excel, uh, brown. But anyway, the reason why I wanted you to come over here. You're doing what I do is just get distracted by leather and boots. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is natural Chrome Excel. Just how much it's darkened up. Yeah, I mean, look at that. These were worn super hard uh, by our manager at our uh, retail store, which is called Independence. He wore them so hard and we were just like, these need to be on display. Yeah, so this is a, a photo taken by uh, a really incredible uh, photographer, a friend of ours in New York. Um, these are both of his personal pairs of boots that he bought. Uh, he bought them at the pop-up flea market, uh, which is like this, it's not a flea market at all. It's called the pop-up flea. It's an event that we used to do in New York. And uh, he bought both of them there. I mean, the black. They're so cool. Yeah, the black is incredible. Uh, people call that T-Core because the black is not struck through all the way. I've, I've always been curious of the T-Core thing just because I've seen some incredible polished up black Chrome Excel like that. But, yeah. But the way the natural ages is just something special. Exactly, yeah. You know, like on Instagram, people are, are always commenting on natural and how good it looks when it's, uh, when it's patinaed. And we agree, it's, it's our number one leather uh, by far. I think black, uh, black gets a lot of respect. Um, and then brown is like what you should go with if you just want like a really solid pair. It is gonna patina. Well, we're doing the, the patina Thunderdome, so we gotta, yeah. we gotta go natural. Yeah, right? the natural most, for sure. Most extreme. Yeah. So you pulled out some of the, uh, some of your more popular styles here to show me. Our number one best-selling boot is uh, this guy right here, the natural day and night trench boot. So, you know, we talked about day and night. It's got these, uh, these studs on it to help with grip. It's a classic boot. Uh, a lot of people buy for their first boot. It's kind of like the one that starts the habit you know, <laughs> of falling in love with Chrome Excel. We all know, you know, Chrome Excel has this great pull up, displaces the leather or the, the oils when you, uh, when you pull on it. Uh, you know, it's got these highs and lows. So this is number one. That's just a great, great boot to have. Other options, keeping with natural, this is the Brogue Toe leather sole version. The profile, you lose that, that black layer, which somebody, some people like. Uh, that it's not there. And then it's got a really, uh, really simple uh, cap toe with a little bit of broguing, rawhide laces, which is a, you know, a, a core component of, uh, of our boots. Everything we do is sourced in, in the United States. I say everything, but then we have to remember that day and night, uh, you know, is not an American component. And of course, uh, we make our boots in the US, which uh, you know, very few companies can, uh, can do that. After that, we didn't talk about it. It's a sole called Dr. Dr. Souls. They also um, are not from the US. 
but it's a super cool sole. It's called a half sole, uh, even though it's more than half of the sole, but uh, it's a half sole uh, that's stitched into a full length leather sole. It's beautiful. We are using two different doctor soles. We're using uh, raw cord and cork. Last, uh, I just want to show you our field boot. I'm so, such a huge plain toe fan. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I've, I have a lot of plain toes, but this is just a really awesome looking, uh, maybe it's with the black upper and the black Yeah, upper. yeah. So there's a lot of components to this uh, shoe. Well, a, a, a common question we get is, how is the trench boot different from the field boot? The nuts and bolts are this. Well, one, you'll notice that it uses a flat waxed lace, completely changes the look. There's no collar, so there's uh, no stitch with along the top. So you have an internal collar here. It's like an added piece of leather reinforcement around the collar. Adds to the comfort, makes it a little bit, a little bit uh, more, a little bit more moldable, maybe you could say. Uh, but just aesthetically, it's a difference. Then the back of the shoe. Uh, this is called the back stay and heel counter, and it's one piece. Uh, on our trench boot, it's two pieces. So you have the back stay and then a separate heel counter. I've never seen one uh, that particular shape on the field boot before. Yeah, so uh, it's a classic uh, World War II uh, silhouette. It has triple stitching here, and then uh, the quarters have quadruple stitching. Uh, so, you know, it's overbuilt. It's, it's great. I mean, I have to, I gotta, I gotta tell you, when I was looking online, I, I don't, I didn't like it nearly as much as I like it in person. That boot in person is really cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it, we do it in three leathers, um, but we do a lot of our limited editions in the field boot. Every limited edition we do in the field boot sells out super quick. Like the black walnut stampedes that we did uh, sold out. Super quick. I'm getting the sense that field boot's your favorite. Uh, What's your favorite? My favorite is probably the trench boot because that was the reason why I started Oak Street Bootmakers was because uh, the trench boot essentially did not exist and it was what I wanted. The trench boot was like this dream that I had and uh, I, I made it. And then once I had that in my hands, I was like, oh my God other people are gonna want this. Trench boot will always like hold your a first, very- Your first love. Yeah. It reminds yeah. me of the Fat Herbie story. Like nobody had this particular wallet and I made it for myself and yeah. turns out other people wanted it too. Exactly. These are really speaking to me. I also, I'm gonna have to show this again just cause how beautiful this, boot, this field boot looks. Uh, there's something about this guy. I've had these trail oxfords and uh, another pair of trail oxfords are the only oak trees I've ever had. I've always wanted a trench boot. I've never had a uh, cap toe before. So I think this is this is probably the guy. Why don't you uh, why don't we try a couple of different sizes on yeah. see how this fits. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, I should mention, of course, there's uh, shoe bags, uh, but there's also care instructions. Very simply put, use Venetian cream. We tend to tell people uh, to pay less attention. Uh, to the width and more attention to the length. Then you're focusing more on the ball of the foot, which is uh, really like a key component to sizing. Pay attention uh, to the heel, to ball, and just kind of make sure that the ball uh, matches up with where the natural ball of the last would be. You can tell, it's just something that you feel. Get them real loose, the lacing. Um, yeah, practically like, you know, just get them as loose as they'll go so that your foot slides in. So I should already be able to feel if it's fitting nicely or not. Yeah, so, um, you know, tell me about the, how, how you do feel the width, because we, uh, we talked about your foot being a little bit wide. Yeah, I, I don't, it's interesting that I'm not feeling like it's tugging me in. Um, yeah. I actually kind of feel like I'm, Still wearing those, which is nice. It's grabbing me. I'm, I certainly can feel it on, on the width, even though you told me to ignore, yeah, yeah. ignore the width. Um, I can feel that it's holding me in place width-wise. Not uh, too snug, not loose at all. If I were to size down, it'd probably be uncomfortable. For you me. have to remember that Chrome Excel 
is going to stretch. For most people, that means it stretches to conform to the contours of their foot. So it's not gonna stretch in length. Like, that's why I said pay attention to length. Right. Width, don't worry about it. It's gonna stretch in width. It took me a minute, but I got my uh, new boots on here. Oh yeah, man, these are, these are looking pretty good. I'm trying not to wear them too much because I really want to have the, the stitch down Thunderdome. Uh, I want these to be my entrance for that. Kind of curious about your thoughts on the Venetian. Uh, yeah. How, how much do you put on? Yeah, so uh, there's a couple components that you want to use. Uh, so that's uh, just like an Oak Street, uh, you know, pouch that, uh, that, that we sell that has like all the needed components. For you, that's got everything you're gonna need. One Venetian shoe cream, uh, which, you know, we just, Look at that packaging. I mean, <laughs> is this like specific to you? No, like, no, but uh, that's so old school. It's so old school. I don't know if you know, but like when I started or I grew up working at my dad's shoe repair. So Venetian shoe cream, that's the stuff that I remember as a kid. And back when we launched in 2010, Venetian shoe cream was not a product that was sold online. Right. You could not find it. And when we released it on our website in 2010, we referred to it as the cobbler's secret because it kind of was. It wasn't, it wasn't a consumer product. It was what shoe repair guys used, what Horween uses. And now, you know, everyone knows about Venetian cream. We like to think like we, we paid a little, played a little part in that. I prefer using their neutral. Um, and you can use the neutral, of course, on black, brown, everything. So I really like the neutral. Apply it with the cloth. Yeah, so you can use you can use anything, like a, a clean t-shirt. Um, I prefer cotton. I might be a weirdo, but I, I control, I feel like I get a little you bit You use your hands, don't with you? With my finger, yeah. Yeah, so. Craftsperson, I guess. Yeah, so we've had a lot of people uh, use their hands uh, or finger. But yeah, and that's what you can buff it out with this. You can buff it in with this. Yeah, so technically that's a buffing cloth. We use it for application, and then we use the horsehair shoe brush uh, to buff it out. Let the Venetian shoe cream kind of like sink in for like 10, 15, 20 minutes, and then buff it. So growing up, my dad used to like the Venetian cream to totally dry. Uh, by totally dry, you know, again, like I mean, haze up a little bit. yeah, because that's when you'll get the most shine. Hey, thanks so much for having me, George. It was such a pleasure to uh, look at all these boots together. And now I got my new pair. I'm really excited to uh, put these to good use for yeah. the Thunderdome. Yeah. Depending on how much you wear them, you're going to start seeing that patina really fast. We always tell people, you know, people ask us, how do I take care of my boots? And we say, don't. Don't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Don't take care of them. Beat them up. Wear them hard. That's how they're gonna look the best.